Hi, it's Mrs. Bustamante here. We're gonna do our first dihybrid cross, cross problem here and how to set up our Punnett square. So a male rabbit with the genotype big G, big G, little b, little b, is crossed with a female rabbit with the genotype of little g, little g, big b, little b. The square is set up below. Fill it out to determine the phenotypes and the proportions of the offspring. So the first part I need to do with this problem is just dissect what it's telling me. What do I know? Okay, it tells me the genotype of one of my parents, uh, the male rabbit, and the female rabbit is little the genotype little g, little g, big B, little b. So let's just talk about what would the phenotypes of these. Remember, gray is dominant, so this rabbit would be gray and have red eyes, which is recessive. And the female rabbit would have white hair and black eyes. So when we do a dihybrid cross, unlike a monohybrid cross where we only have four options, dihybrid crosses are gonna be four squares by four squares. That's because the different probabilities, uh, or excuse me, the different possibilities of gametes that you can see from your parents, or rather what alleles can be passed down, come in different combinations. So I like to tell you that there's a systematic way you can make sure you include all the possible uh, gamete combinations that will get passed down. You take the first, combine it with the third, which gives you big G, little b, your first with your fourth, big G, little b, second and third, big G, little b, and then your second and your fourth, big G, little b. Now, some of you are saying, Mrs. Bustamante, these are all the same. You're right. In this instance, they are all the same, but um, they could be different. And so you'll notice here are each of the gamete possibilities that the male rabbit could pass down. And so instead of just putting one allele above a box, we put them both in the pairs, how they would be passed down um, to the offspring because they would move um, together, if you will. Uh, although they aren't linked, they aren't necessarily going to travel together, just the combinations are what you could see. So we do the same thing for little g, little g, big b, uh, little b. Let's do it over here. Little g, little g, big b, little b. Okay, first and second. Little g, big b, little g, first and fourth. Little g, little b. The middle ones, little g, big b, and second and fourth, little g, little b. Now when you look at these, right, we have a couple different options, a few different uh, probabilities, or possibilities, excuse me. And so again, these are the gamete possibilities, and you're going to put them on the other side. So now... My next step is going to be to fill in my pennant square. And we do that just like we did in a monohybrid cross, except we're going to have four uh, letters in each box here. So you're going to bring these down, big G and little b. And what I like to do is I always like to put the capital letter first. And I always like to put um, like genes together. So the uh, B gene, if you will, or the alleles that represent what you would see from that gene, I like to put them together as well. So I'm gonna bring just my first row down just so you can see what that would look like. And then just to give you more of an example, you're gonna fill across this way the same way. So here I'm gonna add little g and big b. Um, so that got a little crowded there, but that's how I like to write them. Again, it's always good to pick letters that look different. So G's and B's are a great way to do that. And uh, I'm going to continue this on as I go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the squares here.